files you tried to send to me was was canceled by the time I got to it this morning. On Skype. Okay, I'll send it again. Yeah, one of the ones I canceled out, and basically I resent it. Okay, I have one one words of understanding from yesterday. Okay, I send uh, Rev one in the day. I also posted on the site there, uh, or onto the Skype that uh, uh, definition or uh, court case, okay. uh, 1795 Supreme Court decision about uh, that the government is can interface with the natural person. Yes, I saw that. And I need to go review things. Uh, we finally sort, sorted out Ray's problem, but it, it was a crazy day and it's sort of a waste of time, but I'll, I'll kick back into gear. Okay. Let's see. Does that include, like, all levels of government, like even the state and the county? Well, I'll read the thing. Oh, I haven't exactly. seen it. You, it's not posted yet. It's it's on. It's in the I got it posted on to the group site, uh, onto all the uh, yeah, or, uh, Skype groups. Oh, okay. I'm not on the Skype. I'm on the rigor one. I'll go on the Skype and look for it. Yeah, it's a Skype group. Uh, Patrick's been posting various texts. Not not in document form, but text right into the group, and that was one of them. All right, thank you. I'll take a look. Supreme Court, no corporate jurisdiction over the natural man. And see, the United States, in so much as every government is an artificial person. Oh wait, Patrick, I screwed up. I haven't started the recording. Just a second. I'll be good. Oh, no, the recording is on. I'm sorry. It's gone. Yeah, I thought it started. Okay. I have to double-check myself a lot. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. Okay, I'm going to send you a couple more files here. Okay. And that word of understanding to Rep. 1, you should have that. Okay. And then basically... Uh, Statement of true identity example. You get that. Uh, should have a copy of that when you uh, get ready to go to the Supreme Court. Okay, I see that. Where did that go through? Downloaded. SAB 0385 certificate. Downloading. Okay. It's not showing up on there. You want me to put you? You posted them on our off-topic group. I'll post them on on the. Uh, oh wait, on, my my link to Skype's just not going on yet. So. Okay. Well, that's true. I'd say I'm connected, but I'm not downloading. All right. Yeah. I have an email to you before you Patrick? Yeah. Years ago, I sent a uh, question into a uh, state district court asking, asking them if the court could truly be cognizant of a living human being. I never received an answer. Now, they're not going to give you an answer because basically they don't have jurisdiction over the living person. They, that's to give you the answer, basically, would have been let the cats out of the bag. Yep. Exactly. Right? That's right. Yeah. See, they would have basically lost. Ninety-nine percent of their court cases. Huh? That's more. Because basically, all the people are half the people are in prison and everything else. They're after the wrong person. Okay. 
It's on the wrong person in prison. It's the corporate person that want it, that they need to throw in the prison, and they're operating out here under a they're operating under identity theft against us. Hmm. Okay, and that's why this one statement of true identity example that I posted up there, I made it an affidavit and statement of true identity. You're basically doing an affidavit as the individual, okay, and then you get two witnesses to make the statement of your true identity as being the living person. And it's what they're doing. Uh, the government is coming in here. Okay, the man, the living person, is a creature of reason. I am not a NES uh, legus, a creature of legal fiction, as a government corporate derived person. And that's what they made us, is a corporate derived person, derivative person. Mm-hmm. We became a derivative. See, basically, you've heard that word all over the damn place out here. Derivatives, derivatives, derivatives. In the stock market, in the bond market, whatever. Well, they made derivatives of you, too, in the process. Basically, you are one who came into this world by being born of a woman as an alive being to be separated from the woman and then to abandon your life support, Mersac, to be an individual breathing person. Man, child, woman, child, whatever. An American people and a creature of reason. But they turn around and... uh the styled NES Elliot Legus persons were to be our life supporting persons to supply my required interest, but they have been used as identity theft accounts by the United States commercial derivative government to withhold our entitled interest in state in a state of deceptive trust by their corporations. They did this also so that they could obtain payments twice fold. Mm -hmm. Get you to make two payments. And that's in the dictionary. If you look up you go into birth, B-I-R-T-H, well, down through the dictionary, the next one in there is B-I-S. B-I-S is twice. And then you look at the two Latin phrases after B-I-S that start with B-I-S, and I posted those into that document there. Somehow, uh, I'm not making a connection on the internet. But uh, a lot of this stuff's in the words. And I tell you, you don't give up on a dictionary. You'll never know all the words in the dictionary. Uh. Then there's a. Uh, Identity theft uh, document out of uh, the Philadelphia uh, Federal Reserve. And then you also have a SAV0385 certificate of identity. Hmm. And a certificate of identity, basically you don't have to get it. says cert, cert, certification, certifying officer. The individual must sign in the presence. Complete the certification and affix your stamp. But a person not named on 
the securities or has no interest in them must sign this form in the presence of a certified uh, officer. So basically, you don't have to do the certification by signing it in front of anybody. And basically, you do this one about cert certificate of identity about the living, and you can make your own documents using this PDF 0385 form. And in uh, your affidavit, you can put this up, the other part of it in and have your two witnesses and attach it to this document. This is for the Department of the Treasury. Altogether, so far, I think I've got something like about 21 or 22 different documents I'm putting in to go into the Federal Reserve Bank. I'm still working on the damn thing. Thank you. This wasn't one easy turnkey scenario. You've got to think about it. You've got to have a 1099A for both the trust and the estate on your different accounts, your Social Security account, your Certificate of Live Birth account, and then if you have a military account, then you have to have copies of your uh, letters of your EINs. You have to have your Form 56S. Then you have to have your endorsed instruments. You have to have your estoppel by deed. You have to have a cover letter. You have to have your letter of agreement. Your cert your cert certificate. These the letter of agreement, the certificate and the authoriz authorization resolutions and then uh official and you instead the authorization list, okay? Those were the ones that were out of Appendix 3, or out of Circular 10, Appendix 3. They use, if you're going to Philadelphia, use the 03 authorization list. Now, several people think that there's other places you can go and get funds uh, by going to the Treasury Direct and basically by using, going into uh, the bonds and everything else using your numbers. Well, I don't know. You can try it, but you can spend a lot of time trying to get the nickels and dimes and completely miss the big picture. So it's up to you guys with how you want to play the game. Okay, I've got too much more to say. I'll try and get some of these documents done and then post it up on the site or whatever. Good. If you're having trouble, uh, it seems there's more trouble with the Skype groups on downloading than downloading to me. So if you could want, just download the, uh, it's the internet. Okay. Very good. Well, well, we'll watch for them and we'll make sure they get distributed then. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. 
Any questions? <coughs> not at the present moment. Yeah, Patrick, you mentioned them not having jurisdiction or, or interfacing with the uh, uh, a natural man interfacing with a corporation, but also um, we haven't spoken too much about the Eleventh uh, Amendment, and that is almost the same thing, like they don't have judicial power. Do you remember that? About which man there? The Eleventh Amendment, not having judicial power. They don't have judicial power anymore since it's like, uh, you know, it's not the real United States. (laughs) We used to talk about it years ago, a couple years ago. Okay. I just thought I'd, you know. But basically, yeah, with this one statement that I had up there, basically that uh, it was pretty blatant that uh, even back in uh, uh, 1795, the Supreme Court knew exactly that uh, these places are uh, fictions. The government was complete fiction. Basically, they can't deal with the living man. Hmm. Yeah, I have another document I know I downloaded. You have to ask them. When you go to court, you ask them, where's the law? Show me the law. Show me your jurisdiction. You don't tell them, you you don't have jurisdiction over me. You say, where you show me where you have the jurisdiction. That's the problem that Rod Class was having. He likes to go in and tell the court everything. And one guy was trying to come on there on the one call off the Angeles show there, trying to tell him to go into court and ask him, show me the proof. Like the old state of Missouri, the show me state. Hmm. Right, I went to say I don't think you've got it, but uh if you do, show it to me. That's really what it comes down to. When you were talking about the 11th Amendment before, wasn't that when we were saying that the 11th Amendment basically ruled out equity courts and that we formed the equity courts? I don't know. I don't remember it. Okay. Yeah, we did talk about it a bit. Uh, well, about- you were talking? <laughs> well, Steve's the one who brought it up. Ask yeah, I'll post. I'll post what I have. I'll find it and I'll post it on Skype. I'm 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 consumed with uh, keeping track of doing the current work. Yeah, I'll find it. Okay. Anybody else have anything? Uh, one, one other thing I will also say is that. Back in 2010, I went to the Secretary of the State and I asked him to see if there was corporate existence or non-existence for the county, the county of, and the Superior Court's county of, you know, so-and-so. And And they gave me three different certificates, they cost 15 bucks each, that says the Secretary of the State of California has searched and found no evidence or record of those three items the 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 Placer County as a large C county or county of Placer as a large C and large P or the superior courts that they're holding courts at they have that means that they're they're like private they're not they're not even ratified by we the people so I don't know what we're doing in them because they're just doing black market securities and stealing identity 
right, and you've got to do an identity theft document that they are you stole as stolen and are using your a derivative of your identity. It's that simple. Right. That's what the Supreme Court at seventeen ninety five was saying. <laughs> You've got to show them that you are not a corporation. They can only deal with an artificial entity. I I got a question, please, Patrick. Yeah. If you have a vehicle that's uh, signed to a trust and someone is driving other than a trustee, they have state ID and tags and everything, can that person, uh, like, stop them from searching the vehicle if they wanted to because they're not the trustee and they don't have, you know, power to okay that? You've got to have authorization, give them authorization, like any vehicle. Basically, uh, uh, if you're not uh, like a family, direct family member or something like that, you, you better have authorization uh, saying that you could drive that or you can operate that vehicle. Okay. Otherwise, they could turn around and throw it right back in face. Uh, grand theft. You, you're not the owner. Uh, you're not the one that's on this document. So what are you doing driving it? Did you steal it? Okay. Tell me the proof you didn't steal this. Okay. So See, that's a worse scenario this. than basically driving without a license. With with um authorization, would uh, that person be able to? You've got uh, to think about this, okay? You've got to make your documents support your situation. Okay? You're the, in the private. <clears throat> out here. You've got to get your documents out of their control before you try and go out here and try and operate like you're a freed man. You've got to break the shackles. Either by doing the estoppel by deed that you are the owner of that vehicle and get that recorded. Some form or another, an affidavit of true identity. Okay. Thank you. Well, that can be done with three witnesses, too. No. Yeah. Okay, now I'm back on Skype. Okay. Okay, what did you say? Uh, Ray said you could do that with uh, three witnesses, too. You could use three witnesses to verify who you are as a living, breathing, sentient human being. Yes, you have to have an affidavit of identification. Identification. Okay. Would that have to be notarized? Or no. In some? No, because you are using your, <clears throat> and the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. No, 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 no. I sent okay. Tom the document. You can download it now, Tom, if you get on Skype. Yeah, yeah, Statement my... of true identity example. Okay. I, I see the in your Patrick dash dash dash. I don't see that yet. Well, I don't see you as being. You're still in yellow right now. Okay. Oh, I am. I can fix that. That does happen. Maybe that's the trouble I was having. Sometimes that can switch without you even being aware of it. Okay, the two ones in the club just uh, downloaded, and that was me then looking in yellow. Okay. And I see your new document coming through.
some of these things I tried years ago uh, about the identity, uh, like here in the state of Iowa, about the identity application. But now I see how I did it wrong, identity theft out here. And uh, basically uh, going in and basically going in the court. You've got to make your affidavit stand up that you are the living and that basically this court case is not for you. And that basically you have to understand that definition uh, in the Word document there. Sometimes uh, I wonder why I ever got back on the internet. I'll be looking it up. Thank you. After you mentioned being back on the internet, I clicked and tried to download identity theft WP fourteen through twenty eight and it still says connecting. Well, you make sure you're online. Yeah, and uh, maybe I should make sure Patrick's uh I'm connected oh, I was to Patrick to... as a as a contact too. He may not be a contact, but he should be. I think he is. Okay, Don, you're making a lot of noise. contact he has that looks like uh Arizona volcano silhouettes in a circle. Yeah, but it's green, I'm online. Yeah, yeah. You're a contact, I guess. I just can't connect to do the download. There might be other people trying to connect. Which group are you trying to come in through? Patrick Divine Group. Okay, no, I can't download too much onto that group. I only got the identity theft uh, document, and it's about 10 meg, the WP-14-28. Yeah. I'll put, I'll put these on there right now. Okay. Okay, I'll put words of understanding up first. Statement of true identity example next. Identity uh, theft WP 14-28. And SAV 0385 certificate of birth. Now, if you get the words of understanding Rev 1 on page 2, that Supreme Court case from, a, or from 1795 is there. Okay? Okay. Uh, the one, the document I have, let me bring it up. I think it's only the one page. If it doesn't have Rev 1 in the title, that's no, not. Does. The latest. You got to have Rev One. Do away with that one and put Rev One up. Okay, I don't have Rev One. I'll send it to you. So okay. I did. Oh, I found some more documents at um, the club.
Are you posting those on the Patrick Divine Group, Thomas? Yep. Okay. The ones I mentioned are on the Patrick Divine Group. Okay. Yeah, I see him coming up right now. Yeah, I've got that Supreme Court case there on the uh, Patrick Divine Group also. Yeah, take the words of understanding document off, Tom, and put the words of understanding Rev 1 up there. I will do that. I do. I won't explain the internet problem I have, but I got it solved. Also, those two BIS definitions are there. Right. I didn't see him in the other one. He pays twice who pays promptly. Good faith does not suffer the same thing to be demanded twice. And in making satisfaction for a debt or demand, it is not allowed to be done more than once. The corporations have utilized our assets. We know that. We can prove that because how do they fund themselves? Because all corporations have to zero their books at the end of the year. I've said this over and over again. We know that. So where do they get the funding from? They had to borrow from somebody. Who did they borrow from? Us. Because the banks don't have any real assets that they can loan. They would be loaning our assets, if anything. Because the living are the ones who own everything. And they owe us the rent. So basically, they owe us the payment. But if we make the payment on top of them also getting the stuff, they're getting paid twice. That's why the endorsement, and basically why they give you 30 days. You mean they give you 30 days to pay, right? Yes. <clears throat> the boards of understanding Reb 1 are on the Skype group now. The Supreme Court, in as much as every government is an artificial person, an abstraction, and a creature of mind only. A government cannot interface only with, or can't, a government can interface only with other artificial persons. In other words, you have to be standing as, in as a corporate person, an artificial person, 
one that really is not essentially alive. <clears throat> he has to be dead. That's why they need to have you with a last name. You're dead. That's who they can interface, and then they create all these derivatives of your Christian name and family name in the process to create the corporate person, the artificial person. The imaginary, having neither actual nor substance, is foreclosed from creating and obtaining parity with the tangible. You are the tangible. The legal manifestation of this is that no government, as well as any law, agency, aspect, court, etc., can concern itself with anything other than corporate artificial persons and contracts between them. Try referencing that into your fictional court cases here. But you have to have your affidavit in there that you are not, you don't have a last name. You are of the family, but you do not have a last name. (laughs) You ask them, I am who I say I am. Who do you say I am? Play the Jesus scenario on them. You ask them the question. You don't move off the question until you get the answer from them. You got to know the game. They will try and come back with something to get you off of that. And if they get you off that, then you contracted with them in a different scenario. It's all a game. We we have used our last names, but we mistakenly used them. I mean, yes. we have we have. Yes, used Steve, them. you have. Okay. Yeah. Now you gotta listen to me what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. Okay, maybe I don't get it yet. I don't see the Rev One up here on Skype yet. I don't know why it's not up here, Donna. On the Pat Patrick Divine Group, it's up there. Yeah, I'm on it. I just posted it. Okay. A couple minutes ago. I have words of uh, understanding, statement of true identity, example doc, and I have identity theft. And then it says thanks, Thomas, with Christopher Summers uh, underneath. <laughs> Last posting is five four. No, I didn't get up there, Tom. It's uh, I shook shy of it at, at eight forty four, but I can do it again. You posted it on your group, on your name. Oh, uh, Don, let me double check. Okay, you're right. I posted in the wrong one. Uh, yeah, you posted it right back to yourself. Where it should be there now. Send it seven people, five people. That's what all the dings are about. It says 10 people have received it. (laughs) 
and I'll get them up on the Yahoo group and on the uh, backup, the concurrent backup. This is all evident of what their monetary war is. Like you said, they're they're a mirror of our real nation, and they're exploiting and funding our own takeover. Well, like I said on the last call, you are operating under two different constitutions. Yeah, yeah I understand. The constitution. That. Or the United States of America and the Constitution of the United States of America. Right. And one's a derivative. The of is a derivative yes. of the original. The of is the derivative of the original. So basically it's the Constitution was created by the United States government that was formed by the first Constitution to set up the United States company under the second Constitution. So you have two United States. Which one do you want to operate under? The only one that we really are supposed to be operating under is the real one, the first one. That's the one that has our rights in it. They turned our rights into privileges under their control in the secondary one because they've got us under false identification in the corporate structure under the Constitution of the United States. And then they set up their courts and corporations and they don't even exist. These county corporations are not registered. They do exist. Okay. They're all, everything out here, even the original, was a fiction. Okay. Okay? So they do exist. They exist. It's just that you don't exist in them if you stand in as the real living person. That's what that Supreme Court case is trying to tell you. They all definitely exist and have done the corporation numbers. They just don't want to tell you that. Yes. How many people out here before uh, 1871 had numbers? None, bro. No one. Well, this is pretty important. That's a really big one there. Supreme Court ruling, 1795, yeah. 
legal man of today is, is no government as well as any laws. Turn it so any other than corporate or true. You got to know how to read between the lines of exactly what it's saying. You have to read it over and over again. You have to look up some of the words that are there. If you don't know what they, if you haven't looked them up in the past. The only reason they try and drag you into court is because they try and make you the surety for the other party. Your other party, your corporate person, your United States person with the last name, is supposed to be the surety to you. It's supposed to be your life support. You're not supposed to be the life support for it. In the womb, you were not the life support for the birth sac. The birth sac was the life support to you. At least that's the way it's supposed to work. But see out here, you're out here supporting a fiction. Why? We're supposed to be the assured in this country. especially under this 1871 to modern time company government that we have, we're supposed to be the assured. Since they're using our assets, we're supposed to be getting the rents. We're the landlords. We're not supposed to be the slave. (laughs) Stand up and act like it. Do that at affidavit and I and statement of identity. Oh, Take it, modify it some. May not like the way I wrote it, but basically you can write it how you want to write it. However, the two witnesses you're going to get that they feel they want to have the wording on it. Sit down in a group scenario. Work this out. Yeah, we keep coming right back to the basics, like like you say, identity theft and corporate jurisdiction, corporate non-jurisdiction. Yes, you've got to know who you are. And you've got to tell them who you are and show them the proof.
Uh, anybody else have any questions? Comments? That's, <clears throat> this is Ray. I don't have any comments, and I sort of kind of been slacking because of my situation. So basically, I'm going to just start getting on the ball. Thank you. I got to read this, uh, bring myself up to speed, and understanding all the words of understanding, the, th- the statements of cho- uh, identity. And I think I got some work cut out for me, but thank you. Um, I'll have to get back to you if I have any questions on it as soon as I review them. And I've just uploaded them all to Yahoo. Okay. So, thank you, because now uh, I've got to put a good foot forward and keep on going. I was kind of sort of discouraged because a lot of things have been happening lately, but. Well, you got to stop putting yourself in harm's way, Ray. You got to sit tight, okay? Yes, sir. Okay. That is very well understood. That is understood. <clears throat> Any more? Any more questions for uh, Patrick? So then you have you making noises yet. Does that mean you're open the mic to ask a question? I, I guess not then. Yes, I have a comment. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, so uh, I was just trying to finish up the authorizing resolution. So it pr- pretty much has to be changed up a bit. So I basically just identified the relationships between the borrowers and the borrower's fiduciary and just built a map that segues from the cover letter. Um, I just have to take a look at these new identity-related <coughs> documents but, and then just have to update my estoppel by deed and then re-record that once more. Um, with all the manifests of all of the sub-accounts for the more main accounts. But yeah, the authorizing resolution, it looks like it has to be changed. Also, the activities authorized. I don't think that we're going to be involved in activities such as discounting and rediscounting. So some of those types of activities will probably have to be looked at closely when you write it. So that's what I was doing. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, in a lot of cases, we're not the ones that have to worry about that, okay? We get to this Federal Reserve Bank. We come in and claim our collateral, okay? Right. We're, our securities are being held there, okay? And uh, the Federal Reserve Bank, we know that, okay? Uh, one of the guys got me into... Uh, uh, told me we could go into Treasury Direct and uh, do some of this stuff. Well, uh, back in 2009, 2010, I was trying to do some of those forms, uh, the 1522, uh, to uh, try and turn around and send these into uh, Minneapolis uh, with our securities. Never got anything back out of them, okay? Uh, Trying to use uh, our securities. Uh, certificate of live birth because in a way they're not securities they're not bonds okay yes they're fact, notes in fact I suggested DTC also but we, we've tried don't that don't do the, that D, DTC information that guy sent was old shit too okay uh, yeah, I, I knew you had I dealt spent with the that other before. night trying to read through all that, and basically I thought, well, there might be something new on there. No, it was the same stuff that basically we'd gone through. Didn't say a damn thing about any resolution whatsoever. That's what I figured. Okay. That stuff goes all the way back to Tony Fisher King and uh, half that stuff about going to the DTC. 
Why would you go to the DTC? The DTC can't operate with the living person either. Right. They're all corporate. The custodian, two custodians in this country for the mints are in Philadelphia and Washington, D.C. Now, I got a document about identity out here, or whatever. Uh, I forget where I downloaded it from, but basically I've had this before. And the post office is basically the one that basically had jurisdiction over all printing of stamps and other devices and banknotes. So, the post office comes into play, and where was the first post office at? Philadelphia. Stop trying to think that everything else that stuck for the living person is anywhere but Philadelphia. It's not Washington, D.C. It's not Puerto Rico. It's not out in Kansas City. It's not out in Minneapolis. It's Philadelphia. <laughs> That's the only place it can be. But you have to get your package put together properly in the process of identifying yourself and putting your identity theft in against the corporate structures in the process. You were the grantor in the process. The government can't grant shit because the government don't have shit to grant. Especially since we the people created the government to begin with. It's we the people that have the power to grant. Because we granted the government. Hmm. Anybody have any rebuttal on that? No. I just want to make a mention of a correction on the statement of true identity on the last paragraph that says uh, theft accounts, I mean, identity theft accounts by the United States commercial derivative government to withheld, it should be withhold, I said, to withhold my entitled interest. No big deal. It's just, it's just a type error. I've been withholding or something like that. I'd have to see how I reworded that. But yeah. It's the last. It's That's right what I'm saying. You guys can reword this, okay? Yeah, I know. I know. I just thought I'd mention it so that other people were aware of the little mistake. Well, I mean, basically, if, that's what gets me about some of these items. You people have to sit down and read it and catch the uh, things like what Steve's bringing up there on your own. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sure I'll find other things, too, yeah. It's just that I'm not nitpicking. I'm just, like, understanding. Yeah, I'm just making a statement about the other people out here, too, because some of these people turn around and put, uh, I'll catch it before I send it in sometimes. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I don't post the update or whatever uh, when I get around to it. And other people are putting the damn thing in not reading the damn document before they put it in. 
reading and understanding what is there. When you put your name on that, your signature, you better understand what it's saying. If you don't, then don't use it. Because in some cases, you'll put yourself in a worse scenario. Yeah, and that's what our Skype discussion group is supposed to be about, or make a call or whatever, make a note and post it, and I'll, you know, then everybody will know. But that's why we have the group, so that we can communicate, and not by phone, but by just a note that anybody could read. Right, and basically like on your vehicles and everything else, you need to get that transferred over to your created persons, your foreign grantor person, and your estate person. You created them. The government didn't create them. The government created the Social Security person and basically the two accounts out there, the Selective Service and the uh, Certificate of Live Birth account, as corporate persons under their jurisdictional control. You have to move them out now and take them out of government control into your control under your estate and under your foreign grant or person, the ones you created. <clears throat> then you can interface with the government by way of your banker's EIN person, your individual banker, your chief financial officer over those two accounts, your foreign grant or trust, and your estate. Then they're working for you. They're not working for the government any longer. They're not working for the corporations. The corporations have to come to you, to your chief financial officer, to have them, but you have to come in under the identity theft that the government has stolen your identity from you. By usage of that last name. in their corporate documents. How most of you people signed up to Social Security when you were underage. It's not a valid contract, is it? It's an identity theft. They stole your identity from you. When you think about it, like all the money you pay out to use... The Forget the money aspect of it. Just okay. think about the name aspect of it. Right, right. They stole your name. They stole and created a derivative of your name. Patrick of the Family Divine. I'm of the family. That doesn't mean that that's the family I'm going to be buried with. So that doesn't necessarily, that's going to be my living last name.
See, that's the problem. People don't know the power of the name. How many kings and queens out here throughout the whole uh, last 2,000 years had a last name? None of them until they died. Hmm. And then they got put in the family plot in that capacity of that was their last name that they were using at the time or that they were going to be buried in, the family plot name. Last means final. It does not mean living. You have to do an affidavit as such. And now you've got a court case from the very get-go of the founding of this country to substantiate that statement. You've got documented facts out here about the congressman, about running for office. Hillary Clinton can't be in office. It's against the first constitution. No bitch is supposed to be in office. Especially a bull dyke. I love you for that. Right on. Life's a bitch. Don't elect one. <laughs> That's what I I saw a bumper sticker that said that. Nothing against the women around the. Yeah, well, basically, see, they don't even understand. Who are they voting for? Who are women voting for? They're voting for the company representatives, not for the corporate United States representatives. Who are all these people out here that are in office? They're company representatives. They're all operating with the last name. They're all dead. They've rewritten history books to take out. But they wrote the history books using, like, Davy Crockett because he's dead. They can put a last name on him now. But while he was alive, he was Davy of the family Crockett. The Kentuckian. See, everybody wants to have a last name. Basically, you're essentially claiming you're dead. That's a fallacy. And basically, that's what they got everybody through grade school. They taught you that. And you want to believe that. You believe the lie. You tell the lie often enough. And basically, you'll believe anything. You have to rebut it. (laughs) 
And the churches are guilty of that just as much as the government is. Okay, any other questions? If not, call tonight, Tom. Okay, thank you very Patrick, very much for updating us. Okay, I'll try and I'm still work on these documents, and I haven't set these discs out yet because I'm trying to get uh, these sticks that I owe people yet because I'm trying to get these finished up. Hey, I understand on these that, but I, before I, I send them out. So, okay. I appreciate, I appreciate you keeping us updated in, in the meantime. Thank you. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna get to work on this tonight. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you very much. <laughs>